What's up fellow Yu-Gi-Oh fans, I'm the one and only Glenguin. Welcome to today's deck profile. I'm showcasing you my May 2019 True Draco deck profile, but this comes with an extra deck. It's a bit of a spicy deck and I can't wait to introduce it to you. Little disclaimer before we start in all my videos of course, please do not promote any negativity on my channel. All the constructive criticism has been absolutely amazing on the channel. The support you guys and girls have shown me has been awesome, so please keep it up. Any naughty comments, will be deleted from the channel immediately. We're not here to promote negativity. This is just a children's card game at the end of the day, even though it costs a fortune, but you know what I'm saying. So please sit back and relax and enjoy the deck profile. Let's get straight into it. Here we go. We're gonna get around to 1300 subscribers very, very shortly. We are currently at time of recording at 1285, so I'm very excited for that. But here we go, we're gonna start with the True Dracos themselves, the monsters, we're not running many. This is Ignis Heat, the True Draco Warrior. Basically, you contribute off a spell trap card you control. It has to be continuous instead of a monster. And once per turn during either player's turn, when your opponent activates a card or effect, while you control a tribute summon monster, you actually get to take one True Draco or control True King continuous spell card from your deck and either add it to your hand or you can actually activate it onto your field. Unfortunately you can be baited out with Ash Blossom but it doesn't matter because these are all effects that can go off. I run two Majesty uh, Maiden, uh, the True Draco caster. She actually uh, has a quick effect where you can add a True Draco monster from your deck to your hand. And then obviously this sits at one, this is limited, Dynamite Knight, the true Draco fighter, and he will activate a trap card from your deck. So these are all the uh, true Draco cards, and then last but not least, this is like the main big boy himself. Because we don't have Masterpiece, which I'm sure will come off one day on the ban list, but Metaltron, the true Draco combatant, is an amazing card. All you have to do to bring this guy out is literally tribute a monster, a continuous spell and a continuous trap, and then he'll be unaffected by all three of those types, and then your opponent will actually have to get over 3,000 beat stick, such as himself. The important thing about this guy is he actually goes into some of your extra deck plays, which I'll showcase you at the very end, but with Diagram on the field at the same time, he actually gains a 300 attack boost also and if your opponent can't get over that he won't be destroyed by battle once per turn also and when he is destroyed by opponent's card effect or by battle you can special summon one fusion synchro or exes monster that specifically lists an earth water fire or wind monster so i'll go through the extra deck at the very end as to the cards that you can use and then for going first obviously this is true dracos the most beautiful card in the world inspector boulder is so good in this deck you normal summon him and your opponent can only activate one monster effect per type so basically fusion link xz etc it really does make your opponent think because thing is you you bring out inspector boulder and your opponent will you know have to get around this card so if as long as they don't have raigeki or something and they don't have cards that actually wipe this card off the field you're actually very safe uh, with Inspector Builder. So that is my monster lineup. As for the spell cards, we are running uh, two terraformings. It is semi limited, so obviously self explanatory. It adds your field card. We are running triple Dragonic Diagram. Obviously, this does protect your true Draco monsters uh, by battle once per turn instead of them being destroyed. Um, the main effect, obviously, is you once per turn you can destroy one other card you control or in your hand. So if you need to, if you have a prob problematic board, you can use this effect to pop a spell or trap that you have, like Heritage or Draco Phoenix. Uh, or True King's Return, and those cards will actually go off from the graveyard and you can actually destroy a spell or trap that your opponent controls. And obviously you do get to add a True Draco uh, card from your deck to your hand, which is really good with, with that card. And then obviously this is self-explanatory. We don't really uh, have any changes to the ratio on this. We don't change anything here at all. Triple Heritage, Triple Draco Phoenix. Basically, in addition to your normal summon on your turn, you can actually uh, tribute for two Draco monsters with this card and this card because they specifically have two different effects where you can actually tribute them off for. So they're really good also. Triple card of demise, nothing changes here either. Triple card of demise is very important. You do burn through all your cards. You're setting most of your spells and traps because they are continuous. And obviously you get to draw three new cards and then go off from there even more. And if and if you do have cards at the end of your turn, you do actually have to lose them at the end phase because of card of demise. But most of the time, 90% of the time, I use every card in my hand. 
double pot of duality, self-explanatory, ex excavate the top three cards and then you get to add one card from your deck to your hand. You shuffle the other two back in. Now I'm playing uh, one part of extravagance because I don't really rely too much on the extra deck. I'm not playing Monarchs Erupt so I can actually play this card very comfortably without worrying too much about what I'm bringing out. We don't hardly go into the extra deck anyway but when we do, we do pop off boys and girls. So extravagance is really good for draw power. I really would want, do want to bump this up to two. This is super polymerization. I know it's just gone to three. So if you can preferably play this at three, then I would suggest playing it at three. But obviously super polymerization is a fantastic card. I'm gonna bump this card up to two, just because you can discard one card, send from either side of the field to the graveyard, the fusion monsters that are listed on it. So basically, you have like three targets in your extra deck where you can actually use your opponent's monsters. If it's a Salomon Great matchup, if it's Sky Strikers, you can use those monsters. You know, Cyber Dragons, all those monsters can be used. Thunder Dragons, and you can just tribute off your opponent's cards and bring out your own fusion monster. As for your trap cards, we are running uh, Triple Apocalypse. This card's fantastic. Everyone should know what this does by now. During your opponent's main phase also, you can immediately, after this card resolves, Preferably your opponent's not going to be destroying this card anyway, they're never going to ghost ogre a card like this because its effect in the graveyard would go off where if it's sent from the field to the graveyard you actually get to pop a problematic monster on the board. But the other good thing is you can actually tribute summon your monster, so you can actually just tribute this card for a tribute summon monster. Fantastic card. This card is limited, True King's Return. At one time, True Dracos were just running rampant all over the game. It is definitely the best rogue deck in my opinion. But if you boys and girls have any suggestions in the comments on what other cards I could play in this deck, there is hundreds I'm sure. But please let me know, I mean I'd love to hear your comments and what you think is good. I am actually main decking this and sometimes I lose the dice roll more than anyone because I'm a very unlucky guy in life. But it is a continuous trap card, it's anti-spell fragrance, very important if you're playing against Against the Mystic Mind matchup. This card is very important, so both players must set spells before activating them and cannot activate them until the turn after setting them. So basically you play this, activate it and then you contribute it because it's a continuous trap. So I decided to main deck it just for uh, blind going second. One of the most broken cards I've ever used in the entire game. Fantastic card. Crackdown is absolutely amazing. Your opponent can summon something like Dingursu or something like in Allcast or Salomon Greats. Take their Mirage Stalio, do whatever you have to do, and then you activate Crackdown, take their monster, and then it just kind of ruins their whole con combo that they're playing, or take a Sunlight Wolf if you have to. This card is absolutely fantastic. You, when this card leaves the field, the monster still stays on the field. It's only when the monster leaves the field that this card gets destroyed. But you can tribute off this card for your Tribute Summon monsters or your true Draco cards, and then the monster that you have in control is still Special Summon to your side of the field. So the card is absolutely fantastic. Then we're playing There Can Be Only One. This card can be sided out at any time, obviously, depending on your matchup. So if you know someone is playing cards with the same type, then obviously this card is really good because they can only control one monster of each type. So that is why we are playing There Can Only Be One. Battle Traps, the old classic. The Storming Mirror Forces come into play. This could, it's a really good card. It does protect you just in case your opponent has anything, you know, that they can get over you with, especially if they're attacking directly. Activate this. Hopefully your opponent has nothing to negate them. And then the last three cards, I am playing the Solemn cards. So we're playing Double Strike and we're playing one more Judgment. So I've decided to put the Judgment in just because it's any effect whatsoever. I'm willing to pay half my life points for this card to be activated. Hopefully it doesn't get negated and you can just negate anything on board and actually destroy it. So and then we get into the spicy tech. This, so we're going to start with uh, the super polymerization targets. So we have one star in Venom Fusion Dragon. So that's basically for the Thunder Dragon matchup. You have basically uh, also for the Thunder Dragons you can play uh, Dron Drago Stapelia and then obviously for the Salomon Great matchup you can actually use their monsters in Super Polymerization for the Salomon Great Violet Chimera. All self explanatory cards. Now I will never usually do this which is why it's more of like an extravagance target but this is number 61 Volcasaurus. It takes two level 5 monsters. We are running level 5 monsters in our deck especially Ignis Heat, so you can actually bring out as many Ignis Heat as you need to and then you can overlay into Volcasaurus and if you want to play more rank uh, 5, 6 or 7s I do recommend stuff like Gaia the Thunder Charger because it can overlay into Volcasaurus if you need to and for more of materials and attacking defense position monsters. Uh, as for the Link monsters we're running one Phoenix self-explanatory 
one Salomon Great Heat Leo. You can make actually this card with Ignis Heat and then just use Tree King's Return to Special Summon Ignis Heat back. But Heat Leo actually revives your cards also, and you can target one monster on the field and one monster in your graveyard, and the attack becomes that target basically. And then the one Ball Low Dragon, if in case you need to OTK or steal your opponent's monsters because it does not target, so it's a really good card. Um, right, so now we're going into the Metaltron plays. So, any card that I bring out from my extra deck right now, anytime Metaltron would be destroyed, you actually get these cards that you can play. So, you can bring out said cards because these are Earth or Wind monsters. These are the ones that we're playing. So, we can play Ancient Gear Megaton Dragon. You can bring out one Naturia Beast. You can bring out a Naturia Barkion. So, Naturia Beast is for spell cards. Barkion is for trap cards. I fully recommend playing Barkion, especially against Mystic Mind players. One Stardust Dragon, I really would like to get that in the graveyard first so we can bring out Majestic Star Dragon, which I'll show you in just a moment. One Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. One Stardust Warrior, fantastic card. One Shooting Star Dragon. And then last but not least, like I just mentioned, the aforementioned Majestic Star Dragon, which I brought out earlier in a, uh, a duel against someone. And no one hardly ever brings this card out, but I thought to myself, look, it doesn't need to be Synchro Summon to bring out. You just bring out a Wind Monster, which is this card, from off of Metaltron, and you actually get to tribute this card to negate the activation of the opponent's spell, trap, or monster effect, and destroy all cards your opponent controls. The rest of the effect doesn't really matter unless you have Stardust Dragon in the graveyard, because when it is sent from the field to the graveyard, you actually have to shuffle it back into your extra deck, and you actually get to special summon a Stardust Dragon from your graveyard. Unfortunately, there isn't really a way of doing that unless you bring out Metaltron twice in the game, which you can do off a True King's Return, but don't quote me on that. And that is my extra deck for that. Uh, so the side deck is all up to personal preference. So as of this time of recording, my locals actually have been running rough shot with Mystic Mind Burn players. So this is why I've chosen my uh, side deck like this. This is up to personal preference. This is all up to how you would like to play. Double Ash Blossom stops Metaverse, obviously. So it doesn't even matter if it says activate on field because it would. You can actually have the option to add to hand. So Ash Blossom does stopping uh, does stop the Metaverse. Two Ghost Bells, more for the Thunder Dragon matchup and stopping all custs from banishing their stuff. And then obviously, this is the most important card, Double Denko Seca. I should actually bump this up to three, but I do need to side this in against Mystic Mind players. As soon as you normal summon Denko Seca, Mystic Mind players will scoop straight away because they can't set and they can't activate their set cards anyway. So Denko Seca is very self-explanatory in this uh, format right now. Double Call by the Grave. You can actually main deck that if you need to. You can take out certain cards like there can be only one in case you need to go off. Triple Twin Twisters, also for Mystic Mind players, in case they get over Denko Seca. At least you've got Twin Twisters to fall back on and obviously back row heavy decks. Double Evenly Matched going second, obviously. If you've got an empty board, you can actually just bring out Evenly Matched. And this wipes out the whole Allcast deck, in my opinion. So I do face a lot of Allcast. I face a lot of Salomon Greats. People find this really hard to uh, actually get around as long as they're playing Red Reboot or something like that. And then last but not least, if you don't, if you can't afford Impermanence, then I do actually recommend you play Effect Veiler. But obviously, Infinite Impermanence is definitely an amazing card. Because good thing about Infinite Impermanence is being a trap card, your opponent can only really stop it with... Uh, with uh, Red Reboot, but the problem is this can't be called by the grave unlike Effect Veiler So that is why I'm running that and that is why I, I have decided to use those choices Like I said boys and girls use my deck as a guideline for how you would like to play Thank you very much for watching Please smash that like button if you continue to enjoy what I do then please consider smashing the subscribe button also on your way out. Please ding dong the notification bell. And I'll see you boys and girls in the next one. Have a lovely day. And New Glenguin is signing out.